In this video, we're going to be looking at an important aspect of Lean, which is called One Piece Flow. Like many aspects of Lean, it appears to be putting into practice some of the common sense that our grandparents taught us. As a teenager herring around trying to do 10 things at once, I remember vividly my granddad telling me, just do one thing at a time. The ideal system, according to Lean, is one where things flow smoothly from one process to another without any delays. And any time that you batch things together, you create delays and you make the system less efficient overall. That's part of the reason why when cars are built, they're constructed one at a time, with the doors and the windows and the engines all just arriving at the exact moment when they're needed. This has taken years of refining, but it does mean that you don't need to have massive warehouses full of doors, windows and engines just sitting there waiting to be used. After all, if you did have these big warehouses, well they would need a building, they'd need lighting, heating, probably a number of people to manage the system, and all of that adds no value to the car that you buy. You wouldn't be willing to pay extra money for your car simply for the factory to have had a massive warehouse of parts sitting around. In lean terms, anything that is in the system that is partially done is described as work in progress, and reducing work in progress is a way to make the system more efficient. Work in progress can be a half-completed car, but equally it could be a patient who's halfway through their treatment pathway. And there are lots of different examples of batching in healthcare. We often store up work to do at a later date, whether that's waiting lists of patients waiting for a particular therapy, or whether it's paperwork waiting to be processed. Now we're going to look at a couple of examples. One example is clinical notes. If you were a nurse doing a clinic, seeing three patients in that day, you could arrange your work in one of two possible ways. One way is that you could see three patients in the morning and then spend the afternoon writing up the notes. Alternatively, you could see a patient, do the notes for that patient, and then see your second patient, do the notes for that patient, and so on until you get to the end of the working day. And on the face of it, both approaches seem pretty reasonable, and intuitively you would think that they would both take the same amount of time. But, batching all of your note writing together would usually take about a third longer to complete. Most of us find that after you've seen a few patients, to be honest, they tend to blur into one. Was Mrs Smith, was she the one with the dog or the cat? Mrs Fry, did she say the things about the elephant? It's hard to know and it's hard to be precise, and that can be a source of errors. Equally, you might get halfway through typing up one patient's notes, when you remember something about a patient that you'd typed up earlier, so you then have to go back into that patient's notes and re-enter that information. By doing notes one at a time, you're able to let all of the information drop out of your memory and to move on with a much clearer head. You're not having to carry all of that information around with you. So, if batching all of the paperwork together takes about a third longer, this means that three hours of paperwork in a day has become four, and that makes it harder to get home on time that day. Another example is with dictation. Many doctors still use tapes for dictation, and typically a doctor will complete a clinic and have the dictation then sitting on a tape. But that tape then usually doesn't find its way to an administrator until the end of the clinic, sometimes the next working day, and then the administrator comes in in the morning faced with a massive batch of dictation all waiting to be done, and the work's all arrived in one big lump. Now often there's a really important letter that's hidden in the middle of that tape that has to be typed first, and then the administrator can spend a few minutes fast-forwarding, rewinding, checking it's the right letter, and all of that's wasted time. Large batches of dictation often require a fairly large slot of time to be able to work through, and that can potentially add further delays in getting the letters out to the GPs. This makes communication less effective and adds extra work. You have GPs calling up, wondering what's happened to a patient because the letter hasn't arrived yet. Now in a system where batches are much smaller, for example if you had a doctor doing electronic dictation, and sending it to the administrator one letter at a time, then that would make the workload a lot smoother for the administrator. It makes it easier to flag up the urgent letter. And instead of waiting until the next working day to get started on the letters, you can do it in real time. And that reduces the total amount of time it takes to communicate with primary care, and all of the work that might come from primary care contacting us to find out what's been happening. So, in terms of setting up a system of work, the theoretical ideal batch size is one. Everything ideally should be done one thing at a time. But really it's not that easy. It's here that we know that the system holds workers back. The ideal batch size may be one, 
but if you're seeing three patients in the community, far away from your team base, with IT that doesn't support you to do those notes as you go, you simply can't do things one at a time. You're being forced to work in a way that we know is not so efficient. Now this is one of the reasons why the smart recovery process is tackling mobile working. It gives you the option of doing those notes as you go, which overall makes things more efficient. It's also one of the reasons why we've moved towards the clinic, and we've been able to design the clinic hubs so that batch sizes are as small as possible. And if you have effective administration support, it becomes easier, and clinicians' time can be made as effective as possible.